anyone out there in music land, Mike Henning here. I've just got a short little music theory lesson for you today. We're going to talk about the Nashville numbering system. So this is a way that musicians can communicate with each other, and it's also great for banjo players to learn because if we're playing with a capo, we need to be able to communicate to other musicians that aren't playing with a capo what the chord changes are. So I grabbed my banjo today, but all this information could be applicable to mandolin or guitar as well. So let's jump into it, and let's first just talk about how the Nashville numbering system works, and then I'll show you some basic chord progressions you can practice, and kind of some of my thoughts about, about how to best use this idea. Okay, so we're going to start with a basic G major scale, and if you don't know the G major scale, you can check out another lesson I did called G major scale exercises, but I'll just go over it really quick. So we're going to start with our G string and then let's do that again. So just the classic G major scale, do, re, mi uh, up eight notes. And let's give each of those a number. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then back to one is our root. So we have seven notes in the scale, and then we start it over back at, at one. Okay? So super easy. The natural numbering system is just we're going to give each of those notes a number like we did, and then we're going to use those numbers to communicate the chord changes. So you might have already heard some of this, like if you've heard of a 1-4-5 progression, chord progression, or a 1-4-1-5, one, one, very common bluegrass or blues chord progression. You might have already heard of that. So let's break it down. Where do those notes come from? Again, we're getting those from our G major scale. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4. That's our C chord. So if someone said, hey, we're playing in the key of G, our one chord, and then we're going to go to our four chord. So that'd be a G to C progression in this example. And then we have one more note up, our D chord. That's our five chord. So you probably heard, obviously, if you've played some banjo, G, C, and D, very common chords in the key of G. So what's really useful about the natural numbering system is it kind of demystifies everything. It also gives you a lot less to remember. Because if I can remember one, four, five, then I can do that progression in whatever key I want and it's still gonna sound good. I don't have to remember all these different chord progressions and, and you know remember every single change all I have to do is remember one, four, five, and if I can figure out those chords in whatever key I'm playing in, I know it's gonna sound good. The other thing that's super valuable about the, the Nashville numbering system is let's say I had my capo on the second fret, so I was in the key of A, even though I'm thinking in the key of G. I could tell the bass player or the fiddle player, hey, this is a one, four, five progression. And if they know a little bit of music theory and the Nashville numbering system, then they can play along in, in the key of A, I can play along in the key of G, and we're both thinking of the same chords. If I yell out G, C, and D, and I have my capo on, on the second fret, you know, someone playing without a capo, it's not gonna work for them. So what's also great about the Nashville numbering system is we've converted now everything to that common denominator, which is the numbers. So then anyone that has a capo on, doesn't matter where they, you know, even if I had my capo way up here, and I'm playing in an alternate like chord inversion, I can still think one, four, one, five, and and now I'm playing the exact same chord progression that the, the, the banjo player is or the fiddle player, whoever it is. So it's super valuable to be able to, again, find that common denominator where everyone is now speaking the same language. So all the musicians in the jam are speaking the same language. So that's the first thing I would do is start by memorizing or start thinking about the one, four, five chord progression in as many keys as you can remember it. So in G, again, it's G, C, and D. Or you could take those notes and mix them up in a different order. You could do a one, five, four, you know, five. Again, any the more variations of that, that classic chord progression you could come up with, the better. So another really cool thing you can do with the Nashville numbering system is you can give each number a major, a minor, or a seventh. So you could say a two minor, in, in the key of G would be an A minor chord, or you could say, you know, it's a dominant five chord, so that'd be like a D7, 
or again, you could say a minor five chord. So that'd be a D minor in this example. So you can give each um, each number a major, minor, major seventh, or whatever. Again, those those more advanced chord harmonies you're hearing, you can apply those to any of your numbers. The other thing too with the national numbering system is, let's say you you want to grab some of the notes in between the major scale, right? So if I had one, two, three. So that'd be G, A, B, but let's say I wanted to do a B flat chord. So one, two, three. So I would say, hey, that's a flat third chord. Or, you know, I'm, I'm taking the third chord and I'm flattening it. So that's how you indicate when you have like a, a B flat or something. Again, you don't, even though we have 12 chromatic notes in the scale, we're not, we're not giving each of those notes a number. We're still only counting to seven and then either sh sharpening or flattening the notes to get the rest of the notes that we need. So that's another really important thing to think about is, again, we only have seven numbers in the national numbering system and then we can flatten them or sharpen them or whatever we need to do to get the rest of the notes, okay? So after you've learned the, the one, four, and five in as many keys as you can, um, A, for example, would be A, D, and E. And some of these just take a certain amount of memorization. What I would do is start with the keys that you're playing in. So if you're playing a lot in G or you're playing a lot in D, you know, memorize the one, four, and five. Again, you can do the same thing. Take the notes of the scale, even if you're in D, you know, one, two, three, four, that'd be G, five would be A, so the one, four, and five in D would be D, G, and A. The other great thing about the national numbering system is, let's say you need to modify or, or transpose quickly, so you know, you'll probably realize this or, or figure this out if you go to start going to jams or you start recording with people, especially vocalists, um, you know, you can't always sing everything in the key that you want to. So, you know, maybe it's early in the morning and we need to, we need to shift it down or maybe you know you want to pop it up to a higher key because you're feeling like your range is, is feeling better. That's the great thing about the national numbering system. If you convert everything to numbers, then I can easily move it to a different key. Okay, oh, it's a one, four, one, five. Okay, now let's move it to the key of E, and I can figure out those chords, and I know that my progression is still gonna work. So again, if you can convert everything to numbers, that's the common denominator here, and then you can transpose it or you know, do whatever you need to do to play the song, and you'll know that you're still keeping that same chord progression. So after you've learned the one, four, and five in a, in a couple keys, the next chord I would learn would be the six minor. So in this case, it's the E minor in the key of G, also called the relative minor, but it's the six note, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's another really common chord that you'll see a lot, a one, four, five, and six minor. Even if you memorize those four chords in a bunch of keys, you could play like over 10,000 songs and just never have to learn any other chords. So learning the six minor is super important. That's, a, that's one you'll hear all the time. A common chord progression you could do would be like a one, five, so D, six minor is E minor, and then C, four, and then the second time we're gonna do one, five, and then four twice. So that'd be like a super common chord progression if you've heard Let It Be by the Beatles or Adele, Someone Like You, or Wagon Wheel, tons of bluegrass songs, all use that exact same chord progression. One, five, six minor, four, one, five, four, twice, and then starts over. So the other thing that's really cool about the Nashville numbering system is let's say you, you, you find a song you really like. You can convert it to numbers and then you can say, it's kind of like decoding that, that, that mystery, right? Hey, why did I like that chord progression? Why did that sound so cool to me? Oh, it's a one, five, six minor, four. You know, so, okay, now let me take that and move it to a different key. I could write my own song or come up with my own, you know, little riff or instrumental song because I know that that chord progression is gonna sound good because I've converted it to numbers and now I'm just playing that, that new chord progression wherever I want. So that's, that can be really valuable, again, if you find a song that you really like, take that extra time, convert those chords to numbers, and you'll figure out why you like that. Oh, it's a one, 
three, six, two, or you know whatever it is. And you can you can again kind of decode that mystery of hey, why do I like this song? What's the chord progression there? Because once you get the chord progression, you could you could apply it to a whole bunch of different songs, and now you've got a new chord progression you can practice in a different key. You know, okay, let me do that in C. So it'd be one would be our C. Five would be our G in this case. Six minor would be our A minor. And then F would be our four. And I'm not expecting you to remember all these right away, but again, you can take this and do it in the keys you're playing in. So if you're in C, one is C, G is five, six minor is A minor, F is four. And then we had C, G, F twice. So again, now I've got my let it be or, or wagon wheel chord progression now in a different key and I could write my own song or practice that, that riff in a new position. Again, that'd be really good practice. It's also great, great ear training to figure out how those chord changes, how to hear those changes now in a new key and not get thrown off and, and play like a, the wrong minor chord or something like that. So that'd be like a one, five, six, four chord progression. So again, any way you can mix up those four chords would be really good practice. Like I said, you could probably play 10,000 songs, maybe even more with just those four chords. So that'd be really good practice. Another one that you might wanna do, you pr probably won't use this as much in like super traditional bluegrass, but uh, you'll use it a lot in jazz, is called a two, five, one chord progression. So if we were in G, we would do an A minor, and then like a D or a D7, and then G. So if we had a, a progression of G, and then a long D, something that a jazz player might do would be add that two minor chord, so you'd have G, A minor, and then D. So once you kind of figure out how to add chords, and again, you're using those numbers, and we'll talk more about that in, in, in future lessons on how to figure out what chords to add, but basically you can start adding some kind of genre-specific flavors to your song. So let's say I want to give a chord progression I'm working on maybe a little bit more jazzy feel. Maybe I'll add a two minor five chord progression you know, maybe to a turnaround, and again, you can get more advanced as you go on, you can add even more chords, but you can start adding little flavors of different genres by just knowing those little tricks. Okay, a jazz chord ending is a two, five, one. So anywhere I can do that now in any of my keys, I can kind of add that jazzy flavor. So another one that works really good is more of like a ragtime progression would be a one, six, either minor or major, let's do major in this case, so an E major, and then A, and then D. So that'd be like a one, six, two, five progression. So G, E, A, D. You might've heard like Salty Dog or Don't Let Your Deal Go Down uses that progression, so. That's like a classic ragtime progression, so. like a ragtime style flavor to any song you're working on, you could start saying, okay, I'm in G. What's my six chord? Okay, it's E. What's my two chord? A. And then five is D. So you, again, you can take these ideas and start applying them to new songs that you're working on, and you can immediately get a little bit of that flavor that you're looking for. So I found that using this Nashville numbering system, again, it really kind of unveils the mystery of a song can have a ragtime progression feel to it by adding a one, six, two, five change. It's not this like secret mystery of why, why does it sound like a ragtime? Again, you can take the, that, that numbering chord change, apply it to a song you're working on. It's going to give it that ragtime feel. So give this some practice. Again, I would digest this really slowly. I'm not expecting you to, def to get this overnight at all. So 
you know, music theory stuff is best digested slowly over, over, you know, a longer period of time. So start by getting the one, four, five and a couple keys you're working on. Then I would add the six minor. So you've got those four chords now in, in the new key that you're working on. And then lastly, maybe figure out the two minor and the six major. And then after that, you'll kind of, you'll have your, your home base where you can work out of. And then if you need a three chord or a seven chord or whatever it is, you'll be ready because you all have to be kind of familiar with those chord shapes. All right, hopefully this helps you out. All right, good luck.